good morning good morning okay ma'am now you just start because uh, those uh, who need the training i think all have joined and shalini ma'am uh, after that you will start to record okay 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 i'll start now then so a very good morning everybody i'm very pleased to have you all here today i'm going to take you through the presentation that i am going to present today which is on child psychology understanding developmental stages so just give me 2 minutes so that i can share my screen and then i'll get back to you i hope my screen is visible to all of you teachers please yes, if you could yes, respond and tell me yes okay thank you um okay so may i start yes ma'am start now cool cool okay okay right. a very good morning ladies and gentlemen i am ms udita roy and it is my extreme pleasure to welcome you here i would like to thank you for joining me today for the special presentation on child psychology understanding developmental stages today through this presentation i wish to give you all an insight to the following sub topics psychology the difference between psychology and development why it is important for educators all around the world to understand and apply child psychology methods to understand child psychology and different theories propagated by psychoanalysts such as sigmund freud eric erikson and jean piaget child psychology also known as child development is the study of psychological processes of children and specifically how these processes differ from those of adults how they develop from birth to end of adolescence and how and why they differ from one child to the next the role of child psychologists is that they attempt to make sense of every aspect of child development including how children learn think interact and respond emotionally to those around them make friends understand emotions and their developing personalities temperaments and skills the aim of child psychology is to assemble an objective knowledge base that can provide insight into both the nature of childhood generally as well as the distinctive characteristics of individual children since i have here with me all learned and experienced teachers in this forum i would take the opportunity to ask you all a few questions i request you all to please unmute yourselves and answer can you identify a few distinct characteristics you've observed in children of the age group 3 to 5 years teachers you may unmute yourselves and answer any distinct characteristics which you find in children aged 3 to 5 years teachers can you please answer okay since uh, nobody is answering i will give you all an answer the children of age 3 to 5 years uh, tend to you know ask questions very frequently and they tend to be trustworthy whereas children of the age group from 11 to 18 years have trust issues and they don't tend to ask questions but keep themselves private this is what we are going to try to study about in this presentation and understanding as to how these gradual changes occur and how to comprehend and tackle such changes as educators here we would read a story of how a small child in his quest to know how fishes move and swim performs a surgery on his maternal grandmother's favorite goldfish and to his dismay he doesn't find out the reason 
His major disappointment in this entire story is not that he mistakenly killed the fish, but solely that he isn't able to satisfy himself with a logical answer of how fishes move or swim. Some may find the above story cruel, but the others find it a probable topic of debate. And that is exactly where even we, as grown-up individuals, differ psychologically. The difference between child psychology and child development is in the focus area of each subject. Child psychology and child development in relation to development psychology can be understood as two overlapping sub-disciplines in psychology. Child psychology can be considered as a sub-discipline of psychology which focuses on the child from the prenatal stage to the end of teenage. In child psychology, the psychologists pay attention to the development of the child and his abilities in terms of learning, language acquisition, making sense of the world, behavior, awareness, personality, sexuality, cognition, and also external factors such as the surrounding environment. Child development refers to the psychical, mental, and emotional development that a child undergoes from prenatal stage until the end of teenage. In development psychology, psychologists pay specific attention to the development of the child. They believe that the development of the child into an adult occurs not merely through psychical development, but also through the combined efforts of learning and maturation. As the child grows up, he experiences new situations and this allows the child to develop not only mentally, but also socially. Developmental psychology, on the other hand, hence is the branch of psychology that deals with the ways we change throughout our lifetime. Childhood through puberty and until adolescence, which not only involves physical changes, but also cognitive, emotional, and social changes. Now in the next slide, I would like to explain why the study of child psychology is considered so important for educators all around the world. Psychology, as I said, gives education the theory of individual differences that every child has different mental ability and learns with different pace. It is very essential for a teacher to teach his students according to their mental ability. Educational psychology helps the teacher in doing so. A teacher must know the growth and development of the child and his requirements at different levels. Educational psychology helps the teacher to study the ability, interests, intelligence, needs, and adopt different techniques of teaching for effective communication. It also helps the teacher in understanding the mental health of the child so as to ensure the desired outcomes of teaching learning process. Parents tend to judge their children based on their own social conditioning which can be harmful and destroy a child's self-worth. Child psychology takes into account many things that one as a parent or educator might not realize. Understanding a child's psyche will help us connect better to kids and form more meaningful bonds and therefore brings into account a consideration of mental health of the child 
which is i think the most crucial topic during this pandemic mental health an essential part of children's overall health has a complex interactive relationship with their physical health and their ability to succeed in school at work and in society both physical and mental health affect how we think feel and act on the inside and outside for instance an overweight young boy who is teased about the about his weight may withdraw socially and become depressed and may be reluctant to play with others or exercise which further contributes to his poorer physical health and as a result poorer mental health these issues have long term implications on the ability of children and youth to fulfill their potential as well as consequences for health education labor and criminal justice systems of our society an estimated 15 million 15 million ladies and gentlemen of our nation's young people can currently be diagnosed with mental health disorder many more are at risk of developing a disorder due to risk factors in their biology or genetic within their families schools and communities and among their peers there is a great need for mental health professionals to provide the best available care based on scientific evidence good clinical expertise and that takes into account the unique characteristics of the child or adolescent research in psychology has contributed to the development of more effective treatment and prevention of mental health disorders therefore a proper and complete understanding of child psychology can aid the teachers devise appropriate classroom management strategies to cater to such children involvement of family peer and community plays a major role in uplifting the lost self esteem of a child suffering from adaptive challenges it stands not only important for teachers and educators all around the world ladies and gentlemen but also parents so as to ensure cordial parent teacher relationship studies claim that a student even with learning deficits like autism adhd and so on learn better when the teachers and parents collaboratively associate with the child and use their knowledge of child psychology and techniques to help their children learn differently the entire concept of child psychology here by depends on the framework of individual differences where we accept the fact that each child learns and adapts to his environment differently learning styles are a popular concept in psychology and education and are intended to identify how people learn best the vark model of learning styles suggests that there are four main types of learners visual auditory reading and writing and kinesthetic the idea that students learn best when teaching methods and school activities match their learning styles strengths and preferences grew in popularity in the 1970s and 1980s are still in use today according to the vark model learners are identified by whether they have a preference for visual learning that is learning through pictures 
movies, diagrams, auditory learning, learning through music, discussion, lectures again, reading and writing, that is making lists, reading textbooks, taking notes, kinesthetic learning, movement, experiments, and hands-on activities, interpersonal, where they learn on their own, that is basically the hit and trial method that we well that is well known. Interpersonal, where the learners model behavior or learn through collaborative or peer activities. Learning styles and desired goals for effective TLP can be achieved through reinforcements, positive as well as negative. Negative reinforcements should be constructive and positive reinforcements can provide measures for improvement. Like when you ask a student to answer, rather than using negative phrases like wrong answer or no, that is not right, try using the words, good try, but you can do better. Or can you come up with other options or a better option, answer. The teachers, through peer activities, can act as facilitators and make sure children learn by doing. Involving them in group activities or collaborative activities can also help teachers identify any psychological issue or challenge that the child might be facing. The teacher should always remember that every action that he or she takes tends to influence the children he or she faces and therefore at all times should try to motivate and pull up the child and uplift his self-worth. Now, understanding child psychology is easier said than done. But there are few ways teachers can make sure they easily comprehend the idea of child psychology. The few steps that every teacher needs to follow is observe. Observation is a great tool to set the structure of child psychology right in place. Observing the learning pattern and making a note of the same would help teachers ensure smooth teaching learning and also identify individual learning patterns of every child in her classroom. Appreciation is the concept of nothing else than reinforcement studied in the previous slide, where a positive comment can boost not only the child's learning, but also the self-esteem and self-worth of the same child. The process of listening to them and giving them time involves the process of reflection the process of reflection is important. Reflection ensures freedom of expression, which can help strengthen a child's confidence. Next, the teachers need to act as a facilitator who guide learning, who direction and channelize the potential of the students in the right direction. The following steps can be beautifully summarized by a few lines by Benjamin Franklin inscribed in this slide. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. There are quite many theories regarding how babies and children grow and develop into happy, healthy adults. 
we explore several of these theories in this section we deal with only the psychodynamic or psychoanalytical theories of sigmund freud eric erikson and jean piaget in the next section of this presentation but we do have other behavioral learning theories as well like classical conditioning theory by ivan pavlov operant conditioning theory by b f skinner social learning theory by albert bandura and hierarchy of needs by maslow sigmund freud 1856 to 1939 believed that personality develops during early childhood for freud childhood experiences shape our personalities and behavior as adults feud viewed development as discontinuous he believed that each of us must pass through a series of stages during childhood and that if we lack proper nurture and parenting during any stage we may become stuck or fixated in that stage eric erikson on the other hand took field theory and modified it as psychosocial theory erikson's psychosocial development theory emphasizes the social nature of our development rather than its sexual nature while field believed the personality is shaped only in childhood erikson proposed that personality development takes place all through the lifespan jean piaget 1896 to 1918 is another stage theorist who studied childhood development instead of approaching development from a psychoanalytical or psychosocial perspective piaget focused on children's cognitive growth he believed that thinking is a central aspect of development and that children are naturally inquisitive first we deal with the psychosocial theory of eric erikson which is basically divided into eight stages it's called the eight stages of man according to erikson 1963 trust is the basis of our development during infancy birth to 12 months therefore the primary task of this stage is trust versus mistrust infants are dependent upon their caregivers so caregivers who are responsive and sensitive to their infant needs help their baby to develop a sense of trust their baby will see the world as a safe predictable place as toddlers aged 1 to 3 years begin to explore their world they learn that they can control their actions and act on the environment to get results they begin to show clear preferences for certain elements of the environment such as food toys and clothing that's the same reason why toddlers have a favorite toy once children reach the preschool stage aged 3 to 6 years they are capable of initiating activities and asserting control over their world through social interaction and play according to erikson preschool the children must resolve the task of initiating 
versus guilt. During the elementary school stage, aged 6 to 12 years, children face the task of industry versus inferiority. Children begin to compare themselves to their peers to see how they measure up. They begin to doubt their self-worth. They either develop a sense of pride and accomplishment in their schoolwork, sports, social activities, and family life, or they feel inferior and inadequate when they don't measure up or match up to the expectations of others. In adolescence, aged 12 to 18 years, children face the task of identity versus role confusion. According to Erickson, an adolescent's main task is developing a sense of self. Adolescents struggle with questions such as, who am I and what do I want with my life? Along the way, most adolescents try on many different selves to see which one fits best. Adolescents who are successful at this stage have a strong sense of identity and are able to remain true to their beliefs and values in the face of problems and other people's perspectives. People in early adulthood, that is, 20s through early 40s, are concerned with intimacy versus isolation. After we have developed a sense of self in adolescence, we are ready to share our lives with others. When people reach their 40s, they enter the time known as middle adulthood, which extends to the mid 60s. The social task of middle adulthood is generativity versus stagnation. Generativity involves finding your life's work and contribute to the development of others through activities such as volunteering, mentoring, and raising children. Those who do not master this task may experience stagnation, having little connection with others and little interest in productivity and self-improvement. From the mid-60s to the end of life, we are in the period of development known as late adulthood. Erickson's task at this stage is called integrity versus despair. He said that people in late adulthood reflect on their lives and either feel a sense of satisfaction and achievement or a sense of failure. In the next slide, we deal with the psychoanalytical theory given by Sigmund Freud. According to Sigmund Freud, human personality is complex and has more than a single component. In his famous psychoanalytic theory, Freud states that personality is composed of three elements known as the id the ego and the superego these elements work together to create complex human behaviors each component adds its own unique contribution to personality and three interact in ways that have a powerful influence on an individual. Each element of personality emerges at different points 
in life. According to Youth, the ID is the source of all psychic energy, making it the primary component of personality. The ID is the only component of personality that is present from birth. This aspect of personality is entirely unconscious and includes instinctive and primitive behaviors. The ego develops from the ID and ensures that the impulses of the ID can be expressed in a manner acceptable in the real world. The ego functions in the conscious, pre-conscious and unconscious mind. The ego is the component of personality that is responsible for dealing with reality. The last component of personality to develop is the superego. According to Feud, the superego begins to emerge at around age 5. The superego holds the internalized moral standards and ideals that we acquire from our parents and society, basically our sense of right or wrong. The superego provides guidelines for making judgments. The superego has two parts. The conscience, which includes information about things that are viewed as bad by parents and society. These behaviors are often forbidden and lead to bad consequences, punishments, or feelings of guilt or remorse. The ego ideal, which includes the rules and standards for behaviors that the ego aspires to. Field's theory provides one conceptualization of how personality is structured and how the elements of personality function. In Field's view, a balance in the dynamic interaction of the ID, ego, and superego is necessary for a healthy and balanced personality. The next theory we deal with is the theory propagated by Jean Piaget. Piaget said that children develop schemata to help them understand the world. Schemata are concepts or to be lame, mental models that are used to help us categorize and interpret information. He proposed a theory of cognitive development that unfolds in four stages, sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, and formal operational stage. The first stage is the sensory motor stage, which lasts from birth to about two years old. During this stage, children learn about the world through their senses and motor behavior. Piaget's second stage is the pre-operational stage, which is from approximately two to seven years old. In this stage, children can use symbols to represent words, images and ideas, which is why children in this stage engage in pretend play. A child's arms might become airplane wings as he zooms around the room, or a child with a stick might become a brave knight with a sword. Piaget's third 
stage is the concrete operational stage which occurs from about 7 to 11 years old in this stage children can think logically about real concrete events they have a firm grasp on the use of numbers and start to employ memory strategies they can perform complex mathematical operations and understand transformation such as addition is the opposite of subtraction and multiplication is the opposite of division children at this stage can also perform these complex operations the fourth and last stage in piaget's theory is the formal operational stage which is from about 11 to adult whereas children in the concrete operational stage are able to think logically only about concrete events children in the formal operational stage can also deal with abstract ideas and hypothetical situations giving students higher order thinking questions to be solved at this stage will increase their capacity and thinking skill according to piaget the highest level of cognitive development is formal operational thought which develops between 11 to 20 years old where they think about theoretical hypothetical and counterfactual thinking abstract logical and reasoning can also be involved in this stage strategy and planning become possible where they work with their peers to perform various different function and assume leadership roles concepts learned in one context can be applied to another like language concepts studied in the lower age can be used in essay writing in this stage at last i would like to conclude by saying that developmental psychology examines the influences of nature and nurture on the process of human development as well as processes of change in context across time understanding and being able to rightfully comprehend every process might not seem possible as every brain and every individual has his or her own way of learning and growth while not all of these theories are fully accepted today they all had an important influence on our understanding of child development today contemporary psychologists often draw on a variety of theories and perspectives in order to comprehend and understand how different kids react behave think in different times of their life in reality fully understanding how children change and grow over the course of childhood requires looking at many dimensions that include physical psychological emotional and social growth child development theories focus on explaining how children change and grow over the course of child such theories center on various aspects of development including social emotional and cognitive growth the study of human development till today remains a rich and varied subject as educators 
Therefore, our aim should be trying to incorporate a few of the above strategies to ensure effective teaching and learning process and all round holistic development of each and every child that we deal with. Last but not the least, every child learns differently and we should remember the capacity to learn is a gift, the ability to learn is a skill and the willingness to learn is a choice. Thank you. Okay, very good, ma'am. A very uh, knowledgeable session. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, can you send us uh, the form so that everybody can fill in the attendance and leave? Thank you. I've already joined. Sir.